Welcome back to Factorio Demystified 2.0. Time to learn about electricity, specifically steam power, beginning with a closer look at crafting. The yellow highlights around some items are recipe notifications. Useful for new players, they identify what's been unlocked with recent technology upgrades. The one initial research goal we didn't complete last time was crafting a lab, so we'll do that. Notice the lab consumes electricity, not fuel. We can't just dump coal in. Automation science pack unlocked, those are consumed in the lab and they are the only way to progress research further. Offshore pumps pump water from a lake, boilers turn that water into steam, and steam engines turn that steam into electricity. All three required for steam power. Production means what it says, machines that take resources and fashion other items out of them. Intermediates don't do anything on their own, but are used in the production of other items. Iron plates are made from iron ore, which can then be turned into iron gear wheels, which are used in other products such as the mining drills, and so on. Combat items are what you'd expect, it's useful to craft armor to protect ourselves. Logistics are items used to store or transport things around your factory. The number listed by each item is the maximum you can craft with resources on hand. Power poles require wood and are mandatory to utilize electricity. While stone bricks are most commonly used as an intermediate, you can make walkways using them, so they're in the logistics category. We'll add power poles to the quick bar and get our steam power plant set up. Offshore pumps must be placed along a shoreline as indicated by the green brackets. Underground pipes are optional here, but I like to use them to leave walking room for later. Next up, connect the boiler to the water flow. The small bi-directional blue arrows show the flow of water in and out of the boiler, and the large one the flow of steam into the steam engine. Add fuel to the boiler and it fills up with steam. The water requirement of 6 per second has been reduced from the previous 60. The offshore pump still produces 1200, which means that instead of 20 boilers, 200 can be supplied. A boiler can support a pair of steam engines, each of which consumes 30 steam, producing 900 kilowatts of power. The yellow electrical symbol doesn't mean the power plant is malfunctioning, but that it has no outgoing electrical connections. That's where our power poles come in. They can transmit or receive power to or from any machine within that bluish square around the pole. Running while holding down the left mouse button like this will place the poles at the maximum distance they can stay connected. Let's see how our lab interacts with this. Place it outside the transmission range of the poles and you get that same yellow electrical warning. No power, it says. Move it within range of the poles and we get a new message. No research in progress. We now have a dozen different options to select from, all of which require automation science packs being used in a lab. Some maps require you to fight much sooner than others do. I advocate being prepared with gun turrets 10 science packs required at 10 seconds apiece. In 2.0, everyone gets the research queue. Military grants personal weapons that are a big upgrade over the starting pistol. 15 seconds per pack here, and did you see what just happened? There's a couple of advances with orange backgrounds now. That's because we just added their prerequisite to the queue, in this case, military. If you remove a project from the queue with the red X, any project depending on that will also be removed. Factorio is about automation, literally working your engineer out of a job, so automation is our next tech to get. The initial assembling machine is our first step towards getting out of the crafting business. Science packs are crafted the same method as any other item. I'll need at least 30 for the research projects we've chosen. This graph when you mouse over the research project is a nifty addition. Nothing going on now, of course. What do we do with new items class? To the quick bar so we can quickly dump them in the lab. This is the part where we run around like a chicken with our head cut off or a gopher, depending on what comparison you prefer. The iron operation may be out of coal, but we'll be able to rectify that very quickly. If you're enjoying the video so far, let me invite you to hit the like button, subscribe, and drop a comment below with any specific feedback. Building the lab near our ore operations allows us to just slide by and drop the science packs in. Copper needs a refeed as well, an engineer's work is never done. I'll queue up the rest of the science packs we need now that we've got some more metal. And the boiler's out as well, go figure. Since it's a ways away from everything else, I don't want to have to keep running back here all the time, so I'm gonna drop in a full stack. Keep feeding that lab every time so it doesn't stop. If this seems boring and tedious, that's kind of the point. This is why we want to get automation as quickly as possible. Eventually we do get our gun turrets, which means time for more crafting. I want eight of them, 
four to put down, four in reserve, and some extra ammunition. Look at the backlog of crafting queue assembled at the bottom of the screen. Imagine how much better off we'd be if we had somebody else or some other thing or machine possibly taking some of that work for us. It'd be so nice. Later, with military research almost finished, it's time to put our combat toys to use. Escape menu, settings, interface, and we're looking for active quick bars. Anywhere from one to four is allowed, but right now we just want a second one dedicated to combat items. There's our fresh second quick bar. The X key cycles through the current quick bars to activate a different one. Turrets on the quick bar and we'll build one of each of our new weapons, the submachine gun and the shotgun, along with a bit of shotgun ammo and some more regular ammo. The remote view will help us decide where our turret should go. The reddish area is the pollution cloud. Pollution is one of a number of filters we can toggle on or off here on the right. Pollution is produced by many of our machines, and if any of it reaches the enemy bases, they will attack us. In the short term, I just want a couple of turrets in the general vector of each of these enemy bases, so that if we are attacked, we'll have some early warning, and hopefully the turrets will take them out before they get to anything important. A new feature for 2.0 turrets that we don't really have any use for quite yet is that you can prioritize what enemies you want them to target first. Gun turrets are frankly overpowered for this point of the game, fully autonomous and fully automated. You just drop in some ammunition and they'll fire at anything that comes near. That'll do for this direction. We'll set up a couple more towards the southeast. The light green circle displayed around the turrets is their effective firing range. Gun turrets have a range of 18 and a firing rate of 10 rounds a second. We'll check the results of our work in the remote view. I'm satisfied with it. Could put more turrets out if we wanted to be safer, but I'm confident they'll intercept any attacks coming our way. For our personal weapons, we began with a basic pistol. Range 15, five rounds a second. Submachine gun, longer range, double the firing rate. Obviously not much of a decision. Once you get the SMG, you want to get rid of the pistol so ammo isn't stored in that slot and forget the pistol ever existed. The hotkey for switching weapons in 2.0 has changed, it is now C. They boosted the shell damage on the shotgun to improve it, but it's still not a general use weapon. Early defenses are set, automation research complete, time for the next phase of the factory. <laughs>